Hello everybody, Alexandra Negrater here, the blind soap maker, and this video is on a book that I have read by Isabel Wilkinson. It is called Cast. Gotta be honest, when I first got the book, I rolled my eyes and <laughs> I know it sounds awful, like why did you roll your eyes when you bought yourself a, a £20 book? But when it was when it was recommended to me, because somebody had seen it being recommended by Oprah, I I suppose I'm a stereotypical white privileged person who finds talking about race quite difficult and I find it very very uncomfortable um, and I rolled my eyes because it racism was all in the news and racism means something very very different to what it used to mean and, and I think this book explains what America is really actually suffering from. You've got to recall I am from the UK <laughs> and racism when I was growing up meant things like you can't call the blackboard the blackboard, you have to call it chalkboard, you can't call the whiteboard the whiteboard, you had to call it the clipboard, you weren't allowed to sing bar bar black sheep, um, it's now bar bar rainbow sheep, and a whole host of other things that I I just don't really like mentioning because it felt like a power play was taking place and I was being ostracized from involving myself in other people's um, what other people consider to be their culture what other people's perspectives are like, you know in forms of dress in forms of, of hairstyles um, names being taken up um, things like that and, and I was just expected to know things you know like I was expected to know that somebody was Filipino rather than Chinese and as a blind person who is colorblind um, quite literally meaning colorblind color doesn't bother me unless it bothers you at the end of the day and that's mainly my reasons for feeling uncomfortable. Plus, I don't know where anybody else was. I suspect it is just like, oh, I didn't know how to get pregnant. Yes, you did. We sat together in the same class in sex education. Yes, you did know about it. And racism, we, knew, we know about racism. We get taught um, employment law for a start. And we get taught about slavery and the slave trade in both geography and in history so I, d I don't really know why uh, BLM UK were arguing that we should be getting taught more about slavery in schools because it, for me it, it's been done to death you know I grew up with the narrative that colonialization was evil and that I because of my skin color represented that attitude of just culling people because of the color of their skin and their practices and their faith groupings um, you know I, I was brought up with things a diet of um, Disney Pocahontas you know you think I'm an ignorant savage well you've been so many places I guess it must be so but still I cannot see how the savage one is me, how can there be so much that you don't know, you know, and I was brought up with, uh, you know, with that, and that song is kind of directed not just at the audience, but at the white man that is playing John Smith, who represents whiteness, the kind of um, whiteness that people consider to be of today. Or, you know, it was directed at John Smith, it was directed at uh, the white uh, incomers to America, you know? And, you know, <laughs> after hearing about the guy that played Apu deciding that he, he was going to resign because he felt that 
his job should have gone to a, a person of that ethnicity. It just, it just makes me feel uncomfortable. Um, I don't consider that reparations. I'm starting to consider it's kind of revenge porn. But anyway, so <laughs> I was really frightened that I was gonna get a book that looked good and kind of had this, you know, why I don't talk to white people about racism title. Um, and the anger and why, why are white people so uncomfortable? Why can't they just acknowledge and that, you know, why can't they just um, acknowledge they don't know something and then just decide to act differently, you know? Um, and I suppose it's because we're not ignorant, but again, I'm going on a bit of a rant here and I should really be going about the book. I was relieved when I read the book because she gives such a fresh view. Um, she basically redefines racism, you know? Racism originally when I was a kid was considered as a phobia of someone else because of their physical characteristics that did not include disability, even though disability is a physical characteristic. That included things like hair colour, skin colour, um, practices, even though technically that word is actually culture, when you talk about practices and chosen faith, that's more culture rather than race or ethnicity rather than race specifically. Because the reappropriation of language is actually happening as we speak and racism has been reappropriated to mean in America and possibly England now. Um, what it now means is prejudice plus power. Okay? Um, and she redefines it and just says no, no, it is, it is not prejudice plus power. It is actually uh, something that we've, we've all always known. It's called the caste system, where it's ingrained into us to uphold the same laws and to insist upon the same prejudices, including towards ourselves. Because with power becomes, comes responsibility, you know? Um, the white man had the response, the white woman, man, the white human being, or uh, characterises the Caucasian race, had um, kind of been a, been pushed into the position where they had to upload, uphold a law and a kind of a mental belief in uh, what she believes to be the curse of Canaan, or at least has been demonised as the curse of demonised has been considered to be the curse of Canaan you know uh, the curse of Canaan uh, in this book is characterised Canaan uh, the killer of Cain the Cain character is killed his brother um, considered to be black possibly um, and all their descendants so the black people are the descendants and the white people are not I think this takes a great big leap of faith, <laughs> theologically speaking, but that's where some of the origins of the leap, because with cast it has to be first faith based and then actualised in practice like the Hindu caste. The Nazis believed in their superiority in the Aryan race so much that they made it into a belief system where they put their beliefs into practice and they believed themselves to be better. So they were, you know, so they insisted on pushing down the Jews, you know, and slowly eroding their value in the eyes of society by giving them numbers rather than names. The same with slavery, although it wasn't, interestingly, it was not touched on word nigger you know I'm sorry to say it out loud um, <laughs> but it, uh, nigger to the el older generation used to just mean a colour the colour of the playmate uh, nigger in its original form meant slave 
it was used as a derogatory form of not acknowledging that as a person and they had their names taken away from them and given new more westernized names to go with the christian um perspective of goodness to you know because christian names came from the bible and the bible upholds certain people as good and, and it kind of gives them like a, a thing to work on and you know if your name's john you should be like john the baptist you know and i think that's what they thought at the time they were being kind we didn't we don't necessarily think they were being kind um in the long run we think that they were actually being quite cruel and inconsiderate but you know when we grow in a different world when we wear another person's shoes um we you know like in Pocahontas like the narrative of Pocahontas we learn completely new things we learn things that we didn't know before and we learn things we never knew we never knew end quote you know and so we become different and we behave differently but she goes on to link it to psychology which is what i love about this book it's not just the house metaphor uh, to describe the people's fear human beings fear and that's not just the fear of the white supposedly privileged but the fear of the black or the hispanic or anybody else that is a member of the american society to look at the water damage in their house the water damage being the damage done by past history um you know like we're all inside this house of history that creates our, our way of thinking but she also links it to our dna and she uses mice and um, you know the, the the knowledge that when a group of mice are electrocuted or you know given a bit of an electrocution shock uh, to not take food out of a certain bowl when they won't and they will look for food elsewhere okay but they found interesting that their descendants the, the children of the mothers who had been treated that way continued to behave like that and we know that mice can't talk to one another or we think we know mice can't talk to one another and say guys don't go into that don't go to that bowl but I rather suspect that, you know, if the mother knew where they were, that she'd have told them that. She'd have smelt it, she'd have told them that. But we're not mice, we don't know that. And so we're kind of led to think and presume that we're kind of like mice, that it is practically genetically built into us now to uh, behave in a particular way, to believe a particular thing. And to do it so subconsciously that we're not aware of our own racism towards ourselves as well as other people this kind of plays out when it comes to the historical um comes to a documentary about mixed race children particularly in uh, what seems black culture um those who were born with a little bit more white pigment in their skin their mothers deliberately said look you know you can become anything you want but your siblings who are not as white as you can't and that continuing to hold that narrative kind of continues this caste behavioral aspect it continues the caste mentality the caste narrative that you know it inculcates our children into believing that they can't get particular jobs because of their colour, because of the way that, you know, that they are. Um, and if that's the belief that your black friend holds, then you might end up believing it yourself as a white person. And so subconsciously, you don't choose the black person in a job interview because you think, well, will he be able to cope with this job will he believe it if i give him this post or will he just say well you know um are you giving it just because i use black you know um i'll give you a personal understanding of this kind of thing because it's not just black people that suffer from this my dad had a university friend of a different minority background 
and he, you know, he got very, very drunk one night and he just said, you know, I'm just upset because I just feel like I'm, I'm one of those kind of Asian friends. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm a token friend. And it's that belief in the token friends that kind of creates a separatism between us and, and ends up uh, making the white person roll their eyes and think, well, I can't do right for doing wrong here. You know, so why bother? Um, so this book is great uh, because it, it helps us understand the core nature of the issue. And I think the metaphor of the picture of the Nazi soldier that that really fell in love with this Jewish woman and could not marry her because it had just become illegal and couldn't marry her because of how society would have deemed it it was photographed turning away from everybody else asks us the question right from the start okay, you know the history can we turn away from it now? can we put it all to bed? and just say to ourselves, okay, so this happened, uh, let's, let's not continue this narrative, let's not continue to refer to ourselves as the n-word, or to, but in my case, let's not continue to refer to myself as a spacker, you know, let's refer to myself as Alex, uh, let's not resent those who have more money than me, because I know that if I was born sighted, I would be driving that nice car. I would, I would have a job coming straight out of university, even if it's a mundane job in McDonald's. I'd have been able to climb the ladder, but I can't because I can't see and people don't want to give me a job. You know, if I keep telling myself that, I'll end up in the same position as the stereotyped black narrative, you know? I would close doors for myself and if I don't believe that it's going to happen and I don't dream and I don't see it's going to happen, it never will. So this book cast has given me that perspective. Um, if you read it, I don't know what perspective you'll get, but I'm hoping that it is a good one and I hope that you can forgive um, in order to forget and move on and move away from the negativity. So see you later guys, bye bye!